Hey guys, Flay here. Today I will be explaining to you the whole of Nidhogg's phase on phase 3 on Dragon Song Repass Ultimate. Now do note this does not include the I phase as I am still progging there. Either way, let's get right into it. First things first, as soon as you're transitioning between Tordon's phase to Nidhogg's phase, Nidhogg is going to do a heavy raid wide onto everyone so make sure you top everyone off and have heavy mitigations. In the case that you do not have enough mitigations, just use tank LB1 just for proc sake. Now let's break down the mechanic. First thing that you will see is everyone is going to have a limit cut number right above their head. As soon as the debuff timer runs out on each of these numbers, there are going to be towers that are going to spawn right beneath where each of these numbers are located at. These towers need to be soaked by other players except the ones who place them there. Because as soon as you place your towers, you are also going to be getting a fire debuff that will kill you if you soak your own tower. Next thing that you need to know is, 2 out of each set of numbers may or may not have an arrow debuff. These arrow debuffs basically indicate where your tower is going to be spawning at. In the case that you do not have an arrow debuff, your tower will be spawning right below you. There can only be a frontal arrow debuff and a backward arrow debuff. You need to also make sure that the tower's spawning is intersecting the boss by half. The reason for this is the boss is going to be doing an in and out mechanic. So let's take a look at this diagram. The person at west has a frontal arrow. The person at east has a backward arrow. We are just going to place the tower right here because this person doesn't have any debuff. The person at west make sure that their towers is spawned right here. And to do this, they just stand onto the boss's hitbox and look inwards. But the person at east has the backward debuff. To ensure that their tower spawns right here, they need to make sure that they are looking outside. In the case that the person at east is looking inside, what will happen is their tower is just going to be spawning like this. And if the boss does an out mechanic, he is going to die and this tower will wipe everyone. Next thing that you need to know is, there is going to be a huge AoE coming from Nidhogg that needs to be soaked by 5 players. These cannot be soaked by the players placing their towers. If the player who is placing their tower has someone else standing into their spot, they are going to get knocked back to the wall and die. So in this case, the players having the ones are placing their towers right here, while the players having the number 3s and number 2s are soaking the stack AoE right there. The last thing that you need to know here is the players that are soaking the towers also have to bait Nidhogg clones. These Nidhogg clones do Gerskogul line AoEs and need to be baited outside the boss otherwise it's going to be clipping players inside and killing them. Let's take a look at this sheet that I made to help you guys understand this mechanic better. On the left side we have the tower placement that is the limit cut numbers going off. On the right side, we have the players who are going to be soaking those towers and baiting the clones. So here, on this diagram right here, you can see that it is the same as my previous diagram which I explained before. The number 1s are placing their towers. The number 3s have to be soaking the number 1s towers first of all. Now we make sure that the number 1s with arrows are always standing on the east and west side. The reason for this is to make it brain dead so that the number 3s who also have arrow debuffs always go on the east and west side. We made it so that the person who does not have any arrow debuff always goes south. So this automatically means that the person who has number 3 without any debuff always goes to south. And as soon as they finish baiting their tower right here, they are going to be baiting the clones that spawn on them right out. So there is going to be a line AoE just outside. So the west one will spawn right here and, and face outside towards west. The person at south is going to be facing south. The person at east is going to be facing east. Now let's explain what I have just described from the diagram onto a video. So here you notice that I have the number one debuff and you will notice that I also have the frontal arrow debuff. Our group made it so that the frontal arrow debuff always goes west 
and the person who is the backward arrow debuff always goes towards east. This is just to make prog more consistent. So here you will notice that I swap because I have the frontal arrow debuff and our reaper is going to go on the other side. Now let's take a look at the party list. You can see here me as a samurai, the reaper here and the white mage have the number one debuffs. Everyone else who does not have the number ones are just going to be stacking in front. At the same time, the boss is going to be casting Lash and Gnash. This basically means in and out. If it's Gnash and Lash, that means out and in. Now, as soon as these arrows go off, you will notice that there is a dive on us, which gives us this debuff. This basically means we can't take the soak or any tower, otherwise we are going to die. So, it was in and out, so we all go in. And the towers up here, just like I said before, the reaper was looking outside, so his tower spawned here. I was looking front, so my tower spawned right here. And our white mage did not have any debuff, they just stood still right here. So we move out of the way, and the players having uh, the number threes just go there. So you can see here that the three with uh, arrow debuff just goes right here, which is our dancer the red mage is going to go right there because he also has an arrow debuff and you can see here our sage who has a number three without any debuff just goes south so here they bait that uh, tower and the out goes on at the same time so notice here that this is the out animation so in earlier and then this out now at the same time you will notice right here that there are these clones that drop so each of these players who soak the towers are going to be baiting these clones. So you notice that these clones are baited and these line AOEs are facing outside. Now let's take a look at the next part of this mechanic. Now let's take a look at the second diagram. In this diagram, the number twos are placing the towers. It does not really matter whether they have an arrow debuff or not, but in the case they have an arrow debuff, place it like this. In this case, the number 1s are going to be soaking their towers and beat the clones. Now which number 1s take it? We made it such a way that the number 1 standing onto the west side and east side are going to be the ones taking this. This is to make it consistent, so the number 1 standing towards the west side goes northwest, the person standing towards the east side goes northeast. So here they are just going to be soaking these towers and bait it. Now let's take a look back at the video. So here after my number ones, I placed my tower. I am just going to go upwards here. But then you will notice that both of our tanks have the number twos. So they are going to go to the four and B marker right here to just place their tower. So here you will notice that they place the tower. And since I was on the west side, I go towards northwest right here. And you will notice that the tower spawns and the reaper who was onto the east side is going to be taking the one that spawns right here. So I take this tower, I make sure I keep looking outside until this ad is facing outside and he starts casting out. As soon as he finishes casting out, I can move out of the way and the boss is casting another in and out right here. So you notice that uh, these ones go off right here. Let's take a look at the third diagram. So here, just like the number ones place the tower, the number three is going to do the same. The ones with the arrow debuffs are going to stand on east and west, and the one with no debuff is going to go south. Now in the case that you did not have any debuff, what you're going to do is just call out where you are going before this mechanic occurs. So here, the ones that are going to be soaking the towers for the number threes are the two number twos and the last number one who did not get any arrow debuff. So just like this diagram right here, he is going to be the one who is going to be soaking that last tower. We make sure to keep it consistent that the number twos just drop down from northwest towards west and from northeast towards east and take their towers respectively. So back to the video here. You will notice that our sage, our dancer and red mage have the three debuffs and they need to place the towers now. So here each of them are going to their respective spots. Our dancer goes towards the west, 
our red mage goes towards the east and the sage since he has no debuff he just goes towards south now who are the ones who need to soak and bait the clones for these players it will be the paladin because he had the number two it will be the gunbreaker because he also had the number two and it will be our white mage who had the number one with no debuff so our white mage should be going south our gunbreaker should be going towards the east side because he went from the two to the northeast side and our paladin should be going towards the west side because he placed the number two tower from the northwest side so here there are going to be some mistakes but i'm going to be telling you guys how this should be fixed so here our paladin forgot to soak this tower and the dancer took it and killed himself our gunbreaker also did a mistake right here which i'm going to be explaining in a few our white mage did the mechanic correctly so here since our dancer died and the paladin was on the other spot this one got baited randomly so you will see that this clone just uh, gears goggles towards the north side our gunbreaker baited his clone wrong so he baited it towards the inside and this will cleave and kill more players our white mage did the mechanic correctly so from south the clone is just facing towards south so that is how you should be doing all the three mechanics now let's move on to explaining the stack marker now let's take a look at the stack markers the number one stack marker goes off as soon as the number one plays their towers the stack number two goes off as soon as the number three plays their towers let's take a look at that in the video now back to the video where i was number one so here i will be placing my tower so as soon as I place my tower, you notice here that this stack goes off right here and it is soaked by five players. So that is when the number one stack goes off. You notice here as soon as the number three plays the towers, the second stack goes off here and that's where our reaper dies. So these are the timings for the stack markers. Now let's take a look at another video where I have the number three and other players who have the number three do not have any arrows. So here basically we just call out where we are going. So I call street right. So I am going to be going towards right right here. Now there is also the lash and gnash cost. So here is the correct timing to soak the towers and do the in and out mechanic. So here our dancer, our white mage and uh, our reaper just go to their spots respectively to just uh, place their towers. So as soon as they place their towers, there is a stack that goes off, then we do the in and out. So after both of these, then we do in, we go onto our tower, but on the one that's coming, so it's out, so we go out and soak. In the case that it would have been out, then in, then we dodge out first, and then we go in and soak. So here out and soak, and out goes off at the same time, and I bait the clone right here as you can see. And then the number twos go bait their towers respectively now since we are still cleaning up this phase i do not have complete clean footage of the rest of the video but i'm going to be explaining to you guys the further mechanics so here as soon as the boss finishes the wormhole mechanic that is a limit cut he is going to turn to a random side and cast dragon lens this is basically just a frontal cleave just don't stay in front of the boss so here you notice we just go behind and the boss cleaves the front right here right after this there is going to be four enumeration towers now how do we actually resolve this we put it in such a way that our tanks stay static so one tank will always be northwest our second tank is always going to be northeast our healer is going to be always southwest and our other healer is going to always be southeast and then we basically make the dps's adjust so let's go back to the diagram to show you guys how this works so back to the diagram like i said before the tanks and healers are going to stay static and our dps's are going to adjust so how do the enumeration towers actually work in each enumeration towers there can be a set amount of towers so it can be one it can be two it can be three and it can be four now let's take a look at the possible configurations because there can be a total of eight towers only the first set of configuration is four two one 
and one totaling up to eight now this does not necessarily have to be in these configurations it could be like the four is here the one is here the two is like here the one is like here the next set of configuration that we can have is two 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 and two in this set of configuration everyone stays onto their original spot next set of configurations that you can have is three three one and one this is the next set so like i said before it could be three like here and one could be like here as well now let's take a look at the last configuration the last configuration is two two three and one and this is all the possible configurations that you can possibly get but they can be swapped now let's take a look at some enumeration examples so here we are going to go into 4211 first thing that the dps's need to check is whether the tower needs to stay or not so automatically here you can see that this dps will be moving because there is two here and it is only one tower this one as well there is two players here and then there is only one tower so these two dps's should know when to move this tower's dps and tank is going to stay on the same spot because the tower is automatically soaked by two so hence this dps will be moving here this dps will be moving here and this resolve the enumeration number one now let's take a look at another enumeration example so in this case it is 3311 so what's going to happen here is the dps's who have only one tower are going to move so it's going to be this dps and this dps now how do we know whether this dps right here goes like here or he goes like here we make it so that there is a priority system and they only look onto half of the arena so here we just divide the arena by half so this dps right here is just going to drop right here and this dps right here is just going to go upwards here this is one of the most difficult configurations that you can get so i just accordingly let's take a look at one more example right here in this case it is two two three one so in this case what would happen is the players who have the number twos are going to stay still the player who has the number one here and there are two players here that is the dps here is just going to move diagonally and this resolves itself that is just another example it could be a different configuration for example like the two is like here and then the three is like around here so in this case this person would not move this person would not move and this one would move again but they are just going to drop down right here now back to the video i will be explaining to you guys the last two mechanics the enumerations will be failed here because we had two players dead but there is just two more mechanics to go so as soon as the enumerations go off there is going to be two sets of tethers which your tanks have to take one of them will come from the boss itself and one of them will come from one of the clones right there so just make sure that uh, your tanks uh, take it accordingly we made it so that our main tank just takes the one in the middle always and our off tank just adjust and then there is another set of bits that need to be done here from the clones as you can see these clones need to be faced outside and do not kill everyone after this there is just one more drug and coal and then it's an enrage thank you guys for watching and i hope this was really helpful and i'll see you guys next time